I grew up in West Philadelphia. There are very few options for people who come from communities like mine. All 10 of my older brothers have been incarcerated. My mom has been incarcerated, and my father is currently serving life for murder. It was hard for people to be something different than what the, their community set out for them. I don't think there's anything unique about my story other than the fact that I was able to make it out. Andre is the type of person that people love to hate because they can, they can blame everything on him or people like him. They can say that that is the reason why that community isn't thriving or that's the reason why violence is so prevalent. Andre wasn't perfect. He didn't make all the right decisions, but he made really bad decisions for all the right reasons. Andre dropped out of school because he had to take responsibility for children that weren't his. I was school today, man. Andre is my older brother. My brother took in one of his really, one of what we thought was really one of his close friends uh, when he was homeless and he didn't have anywhere to go. Andre let him live in his house for free of charge. One night after Andre came home, his friend decided to rob him. Instead of just robbing him, he, he shot him in the head while he was asleep. I feel like Andre's story is a representation of like so many young men who make really bad decisions, but they do it for all the right reasons. And like, no one cares about them. And like, no one tries to prevent it from happening. This was all over less than a few hundred dollars, if that. How desperate does someone have to be to drive them to do something so devious to someone that they call their friend. That's, that's a question that continues to plague me today is like, how do we create environments and communities where people don't feel so desperate to take another life in order to, to feed themselves or to do whatever they need to do in order to survive? It's very easy for people to hear the story of Andre or hear the story of other young people who have been killed or lack opportunities or don't have resources and sympathize for a moment. But it's like when you get home, when you go back to your jobs, when you sit around the dinner table with your family and friends, that will be your moment. Knowing what I knew after my brother's death, I could no longer say that I didn't have a responsibility to make my community better, to stop it from happening again. If we all share that responsibility, we can create an environment where opportunities and resources are equally distributed to all communities, but especially those most marginalized. Andre's death was an awakening, and it allowed me to find my purpose. I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired. Sick and tired of having more victims than answers, more funerals than graduations, and more guns on the street than we have children. We have placed Band-Aids over bullet wounds, and wounds that did not have to be fatal were. I stand before you today because I've lost. I'm but two years older than my brother would have been had he not been murdered. The next time you see a child's face should not be in a casket, but across a conference table, at a rally, at a political forum, where they are discussing what it will take to not only keep us alive, but proactive in a society that is fighting against us. Yeah, I just wish he, I wish he could see what his sacrifices enabled me to do and who I was able to be because of it.